Hey, 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 everybody. How you guys doing out there? Oh, my God. I'm finally doing this right. Ah, uh, well, it is Monday. It is that time again. And we are back. We're bad. I'm a little crazy and a little tired today. But that's okay because I am Solar Gray, your cinematic sorcerer. How you guys doing? Oh, oh wait, no, that's not me. Yeah, that's not me at all. That's me. There we are. But that's okay because I have returned with my good friend. Hey, everybody. It's licensed in the chair. Yeah, that's right. And... Of course, we are back. We are bad. He is black. I am mad. No way. Strike that. Reverse it. Thank you very much. Now, <clears throat> oh man, we are back. It has been a little while. It really has been a little while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, it's been been a bit. Yeah, I got caught up in the day job. Like I, I actually sent out this big old Twitch stream of like, I'm sorry, I've been gone. Don't be mad at me. <laughs> You know, so, yeah, and again, as you can see, I've been doing some rearranging here in the mm -hmm. library of the Wizard's Tower. You know, we were talking about, um, what was it? Oh, yeah. yeah, we were talking about putting up little shelves and things like that, which will be cool for a lot more of my talking head pieces, which I'm, I'm working on. So, uh, could you do me a quick favor and push that chair away? <laughs> just, just push it away. Just, just, yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah, that's that's a little better. And I'm just going to give you a little more space there. Oh, oh, that's, yeah, that's a thing. Um, so, yeah, um, there we are. And just going to fix you. Yeah, we're still doing some technical stuff down here. Boys, girls, ladies, germs. And move a little bit to your right and you'll be good. And you got to get a lot closer to the mic. You know, there we go. Yeah, that's better. That's okay. better. There we go. So hopefully everybody can hear them. I'm checking all of the um, I'm checking all of the sound things and all that jazz because, yeah, it's been. Oh yeah, yeah. Look at that. Oh, oh, it's looking good. Go ahead and say something to the Hi. folks. Hey everybody, how you doing? Oh, loud. Gotcha. Yeah, loud. loud. There you go. How's that? Oh, better? that's a lot. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a lot better. That's a whole lot better. French fries are done. No, 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 no. That's not French fries. That's the bomb that I have going off. So, yeah, um, we've been working on a whole bunch of things, a whole bunch. Um, don't know if you, you saw, but I ran a pretty good one shot on Saturday um, with a few players, from um, two from California, one from Texas, and that went pretty good. I've also been working on legal stuff. Law. Law. Ugh. That's all I got to say. But, you know, just trying to get some stuff trademarked and copywritten and all that stuff. And I'm going to do something really unwise. Unwise? Yes, yes. Amazingly unwise. Because, like I said, I've been getting some, trying to get some copyright stuff done. Mm -hmm. But what am I trying to get copywritten? Ah. That the, stuff. The logo. Look at that. Oh. Now, if you guys are wondering, this is actually a GM screen. But... The things I'm trying to get copywritten and trademark are things for all you guys out there, such as... Oh, wait, no, that's the wrong one. There we go. Yeah, look at that there. Look at that right there. Oh, look at that guy. He is so adorable. He's so adorable. I'm a cartoon. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, working on that. Mm -hmm. But before I start making toys and um plush you know before i start making plushies and keychains and stuff like that i gotta make sure that the dudes downtown won't see it and then copy it and then make the money that i need to make with this and all that stuff so welcome <laughs> welcome welcome back to the show mm -hmm. man and thank you guys for showing up out there you know thank you very much um and of course i gotta say like it has been a thing it has truly truly been a little bit of a thing because um i've been stuck with the day job that's that's what i've been stuck at um but before you guys get too comfortable with all that jazz and me being stuck on my day job and all that stuff i get you i totally get you but he's here He's right there. And, of course, uh, the people over in NP City, they're, they're going to be showing up soon. It's Monday. I got a case of the Mondays. You got a case of the Mondays? Yeah. 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 It's, I, 
I kind of crashed when I got here. My first thing was like, I need coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, this guy, this guy was like, yeah. coffee. And I'm like, uh, what was that? Coffee. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, henchman, you're, you're starting to be a little creepy yeah. you now. Well, that's, that's because I had, to, I had to recite the litany of the bean. By will alone, I put my mind in motion. By the juice <laughs> of the bean, my thoughts acquire speed. My teeth acquire stain. The stain is a warning. By will alone, I put my mind in motion. Oh, jeez. <laughs> ah, yeah. It's not that we're sci-fi fans here at all, whatsoever. <laughs> but, you know, um, so now that you're here and he's here and I'm here, um, if you guys want to be here, because soon you will not be here, that'd be great. That'd be awesome. All you got to do is pull up your keyboard and send us an email over at backinthedeck at gmail.com. That's B-A-C-K-I-N-T-H-E-D-E-C-K at gmail.com. Um, if you want to check out the show that we did, it was a totally free show that we did on YouTube live, and I'll talk about that in a few. Um, and you just go over to YouTube, search for Bid P, that's capital B, little I, little P, and, or capital B, little, little I, capital D, capital P and um, it'll come up with our little logo right there that you just saw in all of that blue that we are tangled up in and um, yeah you can like you know subscribe hit the notification button do all that stuff um, also follow us on Twitter come join the Deckers on the book our little group if you guys like listening to our voice and hanging with us in conversation then head on over to SoundCloud at soundcloud.com slash BID underscore P and um, do a subscribe and a share and all that stuff and download all of our mp3s for free forever and listen to them whenever you want to and of course don't forget to join our instagram so yeah man case of the mondays i'm telling you this was oh god it was so so irritating um so saturday like last week i put Mm -hmm. up a poll and it was um so, where do you guys want me to do this next show from? Would you like it on, on Facebook Live, YouTube Live? Are you guys happy with Twitch? And people were like, Facebook Live, Facebook Live on Facebook. And I'm like, okay, yeah. And second highest vote um, was YouTube. Because mm-hmm. as much as I like doing public stuff on Facebook and I might like reach a bigger audience, the fact of the matter is not everybody's on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, well, I'm going to be putting it up on YouTube anyway. So, you know, oh, look, YouTube actually came second highest in the in the poll. So we'll just go with that. We'll 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 go with that one. Um, Unfortunately, we've been twitching for so long that I had to reset up the YouTube live thing Mm -hmm. and get a new streaming code and all that stuff. And then the gear was like, no, I don't like this. (laughs) I want to be back on Twitch. So the first hour or so of the transmission is literally me going ah ah oh sorry sorry ah, ah." so i'm editing it right now and trying to get it back up and all that jazz and i'm like but if you guys want to go over there and check out the show just skip the first two hours (laughs) just turn it on and just go to the two hour mark and that's where everything um yeah but you know what that's fine um no it wasn't twitch refusing to work it was youtube um so yeah, and that was big. But the game went off really well. Game went oh, off really well. Um, I actually did something that was really, really kind of fun, actually, and I'll show you um, really quickly because I'm really proud of what I did with that. I must say, um, and it's going to be a permanent thing because people. I'm always trying to get people to show up to the show, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm like, hey, be on one of the live streams. And they're like, oh, that would be cool, but I don't want to be on camera because all this other stuff. And I'm like, are you going to get in trouble at your job? Well, I don't know. Or, no, I just don't like being on camera and stuff. And I'm like, all right, fine. You don't want to be on camera. I get it. Um, Send me an avatar. You know, just send me an avatar and your avatar will be on camera instead of you and all Hmm. that stuff. And they're like, what? I'm like, just say no. Stop giving me excuses. (laughs) Stop telling me why it won't work and just say that you don't want part of it. It's it's you know, don't waste my time, you know, but um, but I did something really fun and interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to see? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Yeah. What you got? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Now, you got to watch the monitor. That's really important. 
Okay. All right. And and the guy, you guys are gonna love this. Okay. Ready? Ready? Right. Ready? All right. Cool. Boom. I'm barely there. Right. Mm -hmm. Hello. Aha. Yeah. Look at that. Isn't that fun? Nice. Yeah. yeah. That's right. That was Paul's character. Paul's character over on that. So yeah, that that was kind of fun. So when I don't have a host physically, <laughs> yeah, when I don't have a physical host, I can be like, okay, well, I guess I'll, you know, talk to my friend over here. And then bring uh, the, the virtual, yeah, the avatar. Yeah, hey, look at that. Oh, brr, 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 when they're talking, you know. And the fun part, brr, ba, ba, ba. I like having girl guests from <laughs> time to time, you know. But really, this guy was BA. Yeah, look at that, look at that. That's right. So, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, yeah, that's what I ended up having to do for the Saturday game. Mm. And I did all that work, and I was running late because last week was literally it was a buck and all. I mean, it was, okay, metaphorically, it was a buck and all. But um, look it up, guys. It's the only way I can be better than PG-13. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I got everything on, and then all my players were like, I don't mind being on camera. I'm like, that's what you should have told me Wednesday. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, okay. You got that. You, you, you figured out the technique for the next time. Yeah, the technique. Um, but those were actually the avatars I made for each character. Mm -hmm. Like one of the dudes was like, could I be a tiefling monk? You got it. Crap. I got to make art for a tiefling monk. No, I got to find art for, for a tiefling, tiefling monk. monk. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So yeah, hopefully we won't get sued on that one. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was a big thing. But the game went off very cool. Um, and we got a lot of compliments from the people that were watching. So, mm -hmm. you know, again, if you guys oh, want to check it out, just, um, look into the archive over on the YouTube channel and leave a few comments and all that stuff. Um, I, I, I get to be a little wacky on that. So how was your weekend? Uh, I had to work Saturday, which, uh, sucks. Yeah, it was, sucks. It, it was a long day. It wasn't a hard day. It was just a long day. And then uh, Sunday, I was planning on really doing a lot of uh, manufacturing on Sunday and just cranking out a bunch of a bunch of parts to build stuff during the week. But uh, my machine was just fighting me every step of the way. So I, I spent most of the day troubleshooting and just trying to my, wrap my head around all that. And yeah, that's right. You've uh, you've been making stuff for that Halloween <laughs> swap meet thing. Yeah, for the uh, Spook Show number seven at. at uh, Halloween Club's parking lot coming up on April 6th, which oh. I always find is weird. It's the Spook Show 7 on the 6th. That doesn't roll off the tongue very nicely, but that's the way the dates worked out. Well, it's kind of like, you know, uh, Christmas for dinner. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'm going to have a booth there. Uh, my business cards arrive tonight. Oh, nice. In fact, they're probably on my very doorstep nice. right now. Yeah. So Dr. Liebram's Emporium of Curiosities, where mm. dreams become real and nightmares become a delicious confection. Come. Cute. It's your destiny. <laughs> I'm not responsible for that. My our friend Tad wrote that copy. Of course, Tad. <laughs> of course, Tad did. So yeah, um, yeah, you've been um, you've been making stuff for it. Like yep. some of the items that he's going to have on sale are things like uh, there. You know, yeah, yeah, just check it. I, I've been throwing them up my Instagram. That's yeah. our uh, carved wooden skull and frame. That's the. Uh, and then I've got my sacred heart. I'm real proud of that one. Hmm, I bet you are. <laughs> Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And, and then, uh, uh, I've got the, uh, that was the first one I made. I really, that, that really turned out well, too. Yeah, it, it has a very Latin feel. It, it's, yeah. it's very Latin. Yeah, you know? And then I've got uh, some wands and some uh, idol daggers and uh, a whole bunch of stuff that changes color in sunlight or glows in the dark. So, yeah. Very cool. That's very, very cool. So, um, without any further ado, now that we've caught up and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um... This time, I'm going to go first. Okay. I'm going to go first because you've got a finale on your hands, and I am three shows away, or three episodes away from a finale. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so, um. Three episodes away and what's probably going to be a three-part finale, basically. Um, well, that, that, uh, you know, remains to be said. Oh. Yeah. Um, I see. You're you're playing with one of my widgets. Actually, yeah. uh, hand that thing over real quick. Yeah, you got to take this away from me. I can't not play with it. Wrong, wrong, wrong. It's not just that. But um, I had um, one of um, one friend of mine who was actually rather. What's the term? We don't see politically eye to eye, but we see um, principally and morally eye to eye. Mm -hmm. 
you know, so it's a little it's a little weird because mm-hmm. he's a Trump supporter. I'm not, <laughs> you know, I my I've got too bad a back to try and hold up a 300 pound um, man. So, um, so I can't quite support the president. But, um, so he was like, "Oh, dude, come out, blah blah blah," and I'm like, "Okay, you want to start YouTubing and live streaming? Mm-hmm. I'll totally help you because he's my pastor and my mechanic." and just a really good friend Mm -hmm. like i said he's a he's a really good dude and we don't see eye to eye on a lot of things but he wants to create a youtube channel and stuff talking about a lot of the things that we do see eye to eye on and a few things that we don't and i'm Mm -hmm. like of course so i'll help you out so i had to drive um 65 miles from the wizard's tower to help him out yesterday and hang with the family and stuff like that. But the thing was, all right, here here was the funny thing. Here was the really, really, really funny thing. You ready for this? Mm-hmm. You totally ready for this? Mm-hmm. Um, he's like, yeah, come on out. I'm like, okay, um, after I do my show, um, I'll hop on I'll hop on um, the Purple Horse and I'll, I'll head out. Um, I got as far as Fullerton, so I stopped by the Dice House. Mm-hmm. And why did I get as far as Fullerton? Because he hadn't given me his address. <laughs> Yo, Google Maps is good, but it's not that good. <laughs> right? So I stopped off at the Dice House, and I, you know, if you're at a friend's store, you have to patronize them. You just, mm. that, them's the rules. Especially when your friend isn't there. You know, he finally took a day off, because, again, you guys know the Dice House from Decker Friendly Stores. Mm-hmm. Um, owner Tuan Le over in Fullerton, California, by um, Cal State Fullerton. Great store, great people, great guys. And I stopped by, because I'm like, well, I'm not going to go all the way out to that hostile territory without knowing where I'm going. I'll rather go to the hostile territory that I know, <laughs> and all that jazz. Um, just Orange County in general, you know, they made a show about it. Go take a look. <laughs> and, um, and so I go into the dice house. I meet, um, one of the employees and I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm so glad you're here. Cause that means Tuan got to go home to his family, you know? <laughs> yeah. Cause he someone is actually gets a weekend. Someone gets a weekend off. Well, a weekend day. Cause yeah. Tuan is very old school. Mm-hmm. And by old school, I mean old school merchant. So I'm betting that as soon as his oldest son can reach the register, he'll be working there. Kind yeah, of thing. yeah, you know, so, um, but yeah, um, and I'm like, well, I got to buy something because I'm here, but I don't have much money. And then I saw a jar full of these. Okay. What are these? This, my friend, is a D20 top. Is a top. I'm like, okay, wait, what, what exactly is this? And let me show you kids. It's a top, but, oh, look at that. I'm rolling a die. I'm rolling a die. This is awesome. It's, it's, it's a top. It's a top. Look at the top. Yeah. And as a GM, I can totally just do that and let a scene play out. Just let the scene play. Well, How you doing? I didn't, I, I picked this up from other players, but uh, spinning your dice. Yeah. Because uh, I can't remember who it was, but I was at a table and someone was actually spinning their dice like a top. And I was like, oh, that looked cool. So I started oh. doing that myself. So, And yeah. then it fell and it settles on 17. I rolled a 17. Um, the problem with this thing is it is very difficult to read. Yeah. But I don't care because it's, it's a top. fun. It's a top. <laughs> yeah, I get to spin a top. Yeah. I'm like spinning a top. So I found it in the back of the deck colors. And I'm like, yeah, I'm getting yeah. a top. Just... Just not using that one for rolling for initiative because my GM would get very annoyed with me if my uh, I'm rolling for initiative. It's been three minutes. It's still going. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> oh, quite honestly, I I'm literally gonna be like, mm-hmm. and you guys go and you guys go in um to the tower. Continue. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, you're totally doing that. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Kind of a combination uh, uh, sand timer and. Uh, dice roll huh good to know <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah i mean seriously roll d20 tell me the number okay moving on yeah exactly like i said like the camera wouldn't point it at, at us when we were doing that but yeah i'm like all right so you guys enter the dark forest you set up camp for the night um who's got first watch okay good to know all right go ahead role play it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. oh yeah that's fine yep yep Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
So, as you guys are sitting up, um, sleeping, nothing happens. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's um, They can be, they, used properly, it will add anticipation. Used improperly, it will add frustration. <laughs> but I mean, by the most part, it'll, like I said, I can't not spin that thing when it's sitting in front of me. Yeah, no, I totally understand. I totally yeah. understand. I'm spinning it now. I'm spinning it right now. It's sitting in my lap on top of my GM screen, just rolling. Just keep rolling, rolling, rolling. But it is a little hard to read. Um, it needs a couple of adjustments. Yeah. You know, but... but it's still again, a cool top. Yeah, it, it's still a very cool top. So, um, yeah, but like I was saying, <laughs> before I was so rudely interrupted by your ADD... <laughs> and he gives the top back to me. <laughs> Yep, I do. Um, you know, I'm going to go first this week okay. um, because I've still got three more episodes um, in the season. And you've got a season finale on your hands. Yep. And isn't it fun for you that season two starts like next week? <laughs> you know, so, yeah, yeah, that, that's going to be a thing. Um, so, yeah, so we're going to start with Daredevil season three, episode 10, because um, this one... I got to say, this one has done a thing. It has really, really done a thing. This episode is called Karen. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I wonder what it is about. <laughs> Presumably Karen. Ah, uh, well, you know, maybe, maybe. Eh, I thought it would be about Foggy. <laughs> you know. And um, it opens up in an interesting way. Mm -hmm. It opens up with, um, with literally just the subtitle or the um yeah the the subtitle of like before 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 that's all it is just a generic kind of before yeah, just before like before what before eight before lunch just before just uh keep watching because this happened before and um it opens on like a party and it turns out it's a party from before and we've got Deborah Ann Walls playing Karen Page, and she's at a party. That's that's just what she got. She's she's at a party. They're doing a party thing. Look at us, party, party, party. And um, you know, it is a standard college party fair. You know, mm -hmm. just hey, look at us, we're at a party. Hey, yeah, look, I've got my. All right, so the dude with the frosted tips. This must be early two thousands or something. And we've got our very dignified Karen Page. <laughs> You know, so evidently this had to be um, part of the college years and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And it turns out we get um, the back history of Karen Page. Oh, okay. Yeah, the back. So this episode is they, like, oh, we feel, get to know where she comes from and, you know, why she mm -hmm. seems so guilty and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm like, okay, this is cool. This is cool. And focusing and, on the one character and fleshing her out. Yeah. And it's interesting because, again... Like, the director is like, yeah, vamp it up. It's a college party. Do the frat girl thing. Yeah, look at all that. Oh, sorority party. Blah, 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 blah. And, um... Who's the creepy stalker in the background shot? That's a picture. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, that, that's I a portrait. I couldn't see it in the moment, but there was just one white face staring out of the crowd, not moving. And I'm like, cinemagraphically, that, that, that's significant. <laughs> That was just deranged. <laughs> They're yeah. dead, dead eyes. <laughs> yeah. That's a picture. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that explains For those it. of you guys who are sitting in back, you know, <laughs> it's like, you know, he's talking about the picture of this guy here. Yes, yes, yes. Eat, eat, eat all. Eat all of the lime. Put the lime in the coconut, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and um, so, sure enough. You know, um, they're having a party, and it turns out that Karen is partying with college students and all that stuff, mm -hmm. and she ends up being one of the people that deals the drugs. Dun dun dun. And she deals. I'm like, wait, a hot blot, a hot blonde, um, that's making out with other girls on a freaking liquor luge that deals coke. I wonder if a Full House cast member paid to get her in. I don't know. Just, I'm, I'm not quite sure, you know. I'm just going, wow, everywhere you look, there's a hot blonde selling Coke at a party. <laughs> I'm just, just saying. Um, so, um, sure enough, you know, it's like, oh, she's there. But 
inevitably, um, and I say inevitably because this is one of the things that happens when a drug deal goes bad. Dun, dun, dun. Hey, you, you sit down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he didn't have the money. He took the, he took the powder out of the hand. She's like, hey, give me that. And then comes the boyfriend. Brr, brr, brr. Now, the boyfriend character is an interesting cat because um, it turns out that this dude is like wearing prayer beads and saying namaste and like spouting Buddhism stuff. And he's like, yeah, Bra. all things are temp- all things are temporary. Namaste. Bra. And it's, yeah, it's like, <laughs> namaste, bra. Namaste, bra. <laughs> you know. But I'm like, you know, you're talking about that enlightenment, but you're selling something that poisons the body temple. You know, I don't expect to buy a gram of cocaine from Gandhi. You know, <laughs> Buddha says three lines in the morning helps on the ways ways to enlightenment. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. There's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> <laughs> right? But, yeah. Um, and, again... Um, you know, she goes through all that stuff, but she's doing the party girl thing. And the interesting thing is, though she's a party girl and though she's making money and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Now, again, this whole scene. Okay. This whole scene that we get. Uh-huh. Hang on. Namaste, bro. Namaste. That happens before credits. <laughs> That's the cold open. Okay. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, this, um, this episode is probably going to be about that. And it actually had me wondering, like, you know, the dude takes the cocaine out of her, out of her hand, and she's like, hey, blah, blah, and punches him, and he's like, boy, you hit like a twerp. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but then, you know, Mr. Namaste comes in, and I'm like, I really hate to be that guy, but I love my mm-hmm. brothers and sisters in rural America. Mm-hmm. But back me up, rednecks, because I'm a ghetto dude, so ghetto dudes, rednecks, back me up here. If you take money out of a girl drug dealer's hands and her male counterpart comes in and beats the crap out of you and makes you apologize, they do still take your money, right? <laughs> I mean, it, it, it does lead to a mugging. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not quite. I mean, it's a, don't they? That would be pride for <laughs> wasting my time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, that that's the whole thing. I'm just sitting up and I'm like, did they take his sixty dollars? Because you know, I mean, the whole scene. Like, <laughs> let me get a gram. Sure, it'll be a hundred bucks. I only got sixty. Well, you're not getting a gram for sixty. Well, I'm just gonna snatch it from you. Punch, punch, arm lock, cry, cry, apologize, kick out, and I'm like, these two are either the worst drug dealers ever <laughs> or <laughs> you know or they're just that cool because i don't know i mean where i come from if you try and short a drug dealer they beat you up and they take what you got even yeah. if it's your shoes <laughs> yeah because that's the that like like i said that's the penalty for wasting my time yeah, yeah. oh yeah you know what um np city is hilarious oh what do they yeah, say we got <laughs> best case scenario <laughs> right (laughs) you know yeah and i'm like okay well that's the thing but you know it sets up like karen is a party girl doing a thing taking a gap semester from from college selling drugs in college and i'm Mm -hmm. like okay so she's got exactly the past but um you know then we go into the cold opening and it's still before and it's like oh look it's freaking true romance because nothing says true love like cocaine in trailer parks you know (laughs) that's that's what i gotta say except cocaine and desolation in a trailer um and then she wakes up late turns out she's running her family's business um their family has a podunk diner in a podunk town that is compound podunk okay that is podunk town and i mean this because it's a rundown diner that nobody shows up to in a town where practically nobody lives <laughs> yeah you know um with honestly the coolest small town cop since andy griffith I, I i do gotta say that um and she's been running the place in an interesting manner and um yeah we gotta say um you know it's it's a family restaurant and her dad owns the place and uh, let's see if we got this here. Let's see if we can do this here. 
Ah, there we go. I got my volume back. All right, yeah, so what I'm trying to do here is um, get a little bit of... Yeah. There we go. So, yeah, and he's, you know, and she's, like, walking around and all that stuff. But when she first gets into the restaurant... 601, Karen. <laughs> nice to see you, too. <laughs> How's that? I said your coffee's on me today. There you go. Yeah, I mean, seriously, Thanks it's like, hey, it's 601, girl. Much. This place supposed to open at 6. Well, your coffee's on me. All right. And I'm like, you know, this guy, kind of a douche. <laughs> but, you know, maybe that's because I have a problem with police, you know. I mean, that that's one of my things. Um, and, um, but <clears throat> it turns out, you know, books and covers, people, books and covers. You can't judge one for the other because, mm -hmm. um, yeah, um. We then have another scene. I'm really trying not to get flagged. So this is why we talk about all this stuff. Uh, yeah, but then we have another scene that's very telling, and this is an important character moment. Because okay. for those of y'all that's seen Scarface, we know rule number one is never underestimate the other guy's greed. But, but only slightly less known is this. Don't get high off your own supply. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that that's a given, and yeah. I'm assuming because she's a party girl, she's not following that truism. I don't know what you're talking about, man. I don't know. She's not like she's polluted or anything like that. But let's take a look at how <laughs> she inter how she interacts with the local constabulary. Be nice. Okay. Yeah, let's uh let's try that again, Sorry. Jeff. I take Hot that milk and two sugars. There we go. Karen, honey, you're starting to remind me of my wife. I don't like it. Oh, what a jerk. Anything else? New eggs would be nice. New eggs? I just gave you these. Oh. Uh, I'm so sorry. Are you okay, Toots? Uh, yeah, no, it's just been, it's been dry lately. I'll get you. Yeah, it's really dry, she says, and it's snowy, it's snowy, it's snowy. Fresh eggs. Something wrong with them? No, no, just, uh... <laughs> so, you know, so I gotta say, you know, um, sitting up and it's like, hey, it's 6.01, I should have my breakfast, brah, 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 brah. And he gives her, she gives him the breakfast, and she's like, anything else I can do? And he's like, new eggs would be nice. Oh, what? Because your nose is bleeding all over them? <laughs> like you're doing cocaine? Yeah. Oh well, let me uh, let me get you some new eggs. Oops. <laughs> you know that. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I didn't quite get the. You're starting to remind me of my wife, and I don't like it. That was a weird <laughs> comment. Yeah. Yeah, crotchety grandpas. Kind of <laughs> creepy. You know. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um. But again, that that is a very good character mm -hmm. moment set up. So you know. Um. So we get to see Karen's life, and it turns out she's running the restaurant for her family, but her dad has run the restaurant to the ground, and her mom ended up dying of cancer. Oh, joy. And mom was running the business. Yeah, so <laughs> she's trying to take over and keep the family business afloat while trying to work on herself. And while dad is delusional, thinking, we'll just get this going. You know, um, and little brother was cool. Little brother was cool. She shows up late, and he's like, "You were at the bakery picking up pastries." And then dad comes in. You know, where hey, you're late? Where you been? Oh, I went to the bakery to pick up pastries, but they're not ready yet. And blah 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 ah. blah blah blah. You know, and I'm like, you know what? That's that, well, good on covering. you, little brother. You know, yeah, covering for you. And because um, the real reason is, is you were passed out because you were out partying all night. Mm-hmm. And. Ah. And yeah, and we get that moment, and then we get to see... Now, again, I'm going to say that I read Daredevil a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, I read... I, I was a, I, I was a fan of Daredevil. I was a really big fan of Bullseye. That was why I started practicing throwing things, like knives and screwdrivers and things like that, which is why I, I'm a good knife thrower now. I'm like, this Bullseye guy is awesome. Look at that. Oh, my God, he took a pencil and he embedded it in the wall, and... My mom works at an office, like, mm, pencil broke, pencil broke, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> you know. 
So, um, and I gotta say, as I was reading the Born Again story arc, which is what this season is based on, mm -hmm. I gotta say, flat out and out loud, I hated Karen Page. Hated. I'm talking, ha I hated her so much. I, I did the flames, flames from the side of my face. I feel, and I feel like you're, you're you're trying to express something. Yeah, that, that I'm, falling there was short. so much hatred, like so much, like a a a, a freaking a, a Ku Klux Klan death metal band didn't have as much hate in their hearts for me as I had for Karen Page. I was just so hateful, um, and that's because um, two of the most popular writers in comic book um, in comic book history know absolutely nothing about women and cannot write them. Mm -hmm. None. I'm talking, of course, about Alan Moore, you know, one of my top favorite writers of any genre all the time. But he doesn't write good women, and we'll get to that later on in the show. And um, Frank Miller, the dude who wrote Daredevil, um, and we'll get to that later on because there is a juxtaposition between the history of Karen in the comics and the history of Karen in the show. Mm -hmm. But um, just looking at this and looking at Deborah Ann Wall's performance so far, she's good. She's mm -hmm. really good. Okay, she's amazing. And this is why. Um, after the whole nose thing that happened, her brother's like, you know, there are studies that show that your performance increases 110% when you show up to work sober. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ouch. Now, as a little brother, <laughs> I got to say... Perfect burn. That's a little brother burn <laughs> right there, yeah. you know, especially after the look I covered for you. OK, I covered for you early. Um, yeah, <laughs> um, um, not quite. Um, and um, the chat is like, oh, Frank Miller wrote her. Oh, probably wrote. She was written like a hooker. No. Um, Sorry, I'm sorry to tell you, chat. I think that's an impossible adventure pub. Yeah, she wasn't written like one. She was written as one. Okay, but we'll get to that later on. <laughs> um, and, of course, they have an interesting confrontation. Um, because, you know, the little brother was in the kitchen. He's the cook, and he sees what happened with her and the cop and having to throw it away. And he's like, yeah, uh, what was wrong with the eggs? Oh, I dropped them. Oh, silly me. And he's like, mm-hmm. Then he makes the sober comment. And she's like, well, maybe if you use a little less butter, they wouldn't slip off the plate. And the thing is, um, I grew up in a very drug-infested area. Mm -hmm. And I've spent the past 30 years of my life working with people um, to help them recover from the effects of alcoholism and drugs, mm -hmm. which means I know the behavior. And this writer really got it. This writer really got it. Because that whole, yeah, maybe, 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 and I'm like, yep. Because drug addicts, when they're caught, they tend to double down on the lie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that's one of the things they do. A lot of people go, um, a lot of people go, yeah, you caught me, but who are you to judge me? Brr, brr, brr. I'll get drunk on vanilla extract if I want to. <laughs> and, um, but, um, yeah, there's one of the organizations I work with saying, an alcoholic uh, will steal your stuff and sell it, and then when you confront them, they'll cry, they'll apologize, and they'll promise not to do it again until they do it the next time. Mm. A drug addict will pretend they don't know anything about it and help you look for it after they've done the drugs that they bought with the money from selling your stuff. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, so, sure enough, that is actually... One of the things that came down um, in this next scene. <coughs> Thanks. Hey, do we have a regular order set up at Cisco, or do we have to, like, call it in every time? Why, are you looking for a career in the greasy spoon industry? I figured I could pull a little more weight around you, that's all. Why? Why would you suddenly feel the need for that? Because I'm trying to steal your position of power in the family. Could if you have something to say to me? And again, the little brother is just like sarcastic comment after sarcastic comment. Love him. Love him. It's like, you know, I'm going to turn the subtitles on and the volume down so we don't get flagged. But, um, yeah, I mean, he's literally sitting up and he's like, so, uh, yeah, do can we do a better order with that? And what do you need to know about that? Because I'm, I'm trying to take your position of power in our family. <laughs> you know. Yeah. 
Yeah, that, that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, so. I, 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 I cover the throne of the diner. <laughs> the dunk dunk. Yes, exactly. And um, so let, let's see what well, we can do. Getting back to that. Just say it because I got a lot of shit to do. Around you here. saw me a dick for two seconds. You caught me. Fine, I do drugs. Right? I'm, a, I'm a big junkie. I'm just two lines There's away, two lines away from the heroin on the street. BJ's on the street it's for the heroin. Eventually. I won't touch it again. It really that, I won't do it again. Like, <laughs> whoa, whoa, I'm not talking about. Blah, blah, blah. Blah. Blah, blah, blah. Leave me alone about my drugs. Here. What? what read it. Here, just read this. Just, just read this letter. <laughs> read, 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 no, read, I read. Yeah, I no, I you. deferred. I know, I undeferred you. Or, I got you into college, big sister. <laughs> That's what he's trying to tell her. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm taking over so you can get out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it, oh, you know what? It's actually funny that you say that, Aaron. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she's like, what is it? Uh, what, huh? The traditional response is thank you. <laughs> Like, how about thanking me from getting you out of this quiet, this? podunk, redneck <laughs> mountain town? Here, <laughs> like, yeah, you got to get out of here. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, seriously, you know, just you're my big sister. I love you. You're better than this place. Being here is killing you. And now you're doing the cocaine like Dr. Roxo. I got you into college. Get out. <laughs> get out. You know, just get out. Yeah. Our lives were directed by Jordan Peele. Get out! Get out! <laughs> get out! You ain't one of us! <laughs> yeah, so. Okay, fine. I took the punchline too far. Shut up. <laughs> um, but yeah, so. Um, and again, she does that whole thing mm -hmm. and bad stuff happens. But then she goes and talks to Todd. And. Todd is Todd is the drug dealing boyfriend, and he does a really interesting thing. Bruh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, bro. He's the drug dealing boyfriend, bro. Namaste. Have more coke. Um, <laughs> and this dude, this dude. Um, for those of us that grew up in the ghetto, we see what's going on. Essentially, he pulls the. So, are you really going to go to college? And she's like, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. I don't think I'm going to get out of here. And he's like, well, you could come work for me full time because over the course of that conversation with her brother, her dad ended up buying a new stove because their stove is always broken. So he bought a new stove for $5,000 that they didn't have yeah. and said the best line ever. Don't worry about it, honey. You'll figure it out. You always do. Uh... And that line was following... Um, kid i don't need your permission to buy a new stove for my restaurant <laughs> and i'm just like oh yeah yeah i i get it yeah so in other words i've made this unilateral decision you don't get to you don't get to override on it but you're gonna have to figure out how to pay for it exactly and meanwhile she's going hmm, yeah i could stick around and be caught in this situation forever or i could leave but, well, no, it's, I am stuck in this situation forever. I want to leave. It, it's not the Luke Skywalker <laughs> looking into the sunset at a better life with adventure in the great white somewhere. Or she doesn't want to be part of a world. No, no, no. It's more like George Bailey in It's a Wonderful Life. She's afraid that if she gets out of there, <laughs> her dad and her brother are pretty much going to die. <laughs> yeah. You know? And they don't give her much reason to think otherwise. <laughs> you yeah. know. Well, it seems like Dad is on the path of self-destruction no matter what she does. And I think that would be kind of a telling moment of, uh, yeah, you know what? This isn't going to get any better. It's only going to get any worse. And every gain, success or gains you make, it's going to be sabotaged. So, Which is why her brother run. undeferred her. <laughs> That's exactly why her younger brother turned in the college application and said, get out. Get out. Get out. Your nose is already bleeding, so all you got to do is just get out. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so. I did like the fact that the makeup, they made her blotchy and uh, her nose all red and irritated. Um, she is very, what's the term, um. Not Amber Thane. Alabaster. She is very alab she's a very yeah. alabaster actress in the first place. And that area is set in a ski resort town. Yeah. It's but cold. I mean, but and I mean you they guys would, get pasty. They, 
they didn't try to cover that. They, uh, they ex, you know what I mean? Because that's how she would normally look in that environment. Okay, all right. And they didn't go, oh, well, we're going to make you know make her young and idealized. And no, they're like, nah, <laughs> she's nah. blotchy, she's nah. tired. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if you look in the background, you'll see a little dude in a hoodie that's pulled really tight, and all he does is mumble. Um, <laughs> no, I, I'm, that was a joke. All right, I'm trying to be more humorous. Um. Was yeah. that creepy guy in the background? Oh no, that's that's, another, that's the calendar. No, that was a, that's yeah. the calendar area. <laughs> yeah, but um, <clears throat> but no, the drug dealing boyfriend is like, well, you could go to work for me full time. You'll make the money to uh, pay off that stove in like a week, you know. And this is the way that pimps convince women to not leave them. Mm-hmm. And I'm seeing that. I don't know if my suburban friends caught that. But, you know, it's like, well, are you going to go? I don't know. College is a thing. Well, I mean, if you're short on money, you can always come work for me full time mm-hmm. instead of part time because I love you. This ain't psychologically abusive at all. I'm not a bad guy. What would you do without me? Yeah, yeah. You see what I mean? I Bruh. just <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Namaste. Namaste. Namaste, you know. <laughs> For those of you guys listening, I'm making backhand gestures. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, and you know, it's um, it, it's definitely one of those weird things. And so she ends up getting called to go home, um, because dad calls and says, "I need to see you right now. It's an emergency." And she's like, "Oh my god, blah, 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 right?" And dad needs to see her. Because he wants something interesting. That look on your face says, what? What are you talking about interesting? This isn't going to go in a weird taboo place, is it? He. I'm already creeped out by photo guy. I, I have no idea where this is going. He wants to have dinner as a family. <laughs> Yeah, you know, no good can come from this. <laughs> Look, for you guys out there that might be watching from the suburbs, if you are from a dysfunctional family, specifically a poor dysfunctional family, cowboy up, um, and you never have dinner together, and then the leader of the house says, oh, I want to have a nice family dinner. Something's going down. All right, something is wrong. You're no, going to get hit with something. No, it's when it's it's an emergency. You have to come home for dinner. Oh, he didn't say come home for dinner. He just said you had to show up because he knew that unless he made it like the place was on fire, she'd just ignore him. Yeah. (laughs) But, yeah, when it does that and it's, I want to have dinner as a family, something's going down. Like somebody's about to get disowned or it's time to grab the shovel and take your little brother to the place that we left your last little brother. You know, it's it's kind of one of those things. Yeah, that's a, we need to talk. (laughs) Or... Is the dining room covered in plastic? <laughs> is, uh, is, is Dad working on the drywall? That's what I need to know. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Safety, safety tip. You always just check. If there's plastic on the floor, don't go in the room. Yeah. That's, that's, you've learned that lesson from earlier episodes. Uh, so, you know, we'll see how well this is. But yeah, I, I have a feeling that Dad is about to come up with some sort of harebrained scheme to save everything. Um, well, it's funny that you'd mention that because you would be incorrect. Yeah. Um, he's essentially going, we're doing this to celebrate as a family since you're going off to college. And she's like, mother, did you tell him? You, oh, you know, and she's going, look, I can't get out of here because you guys don't know what you're doing. Mom did everything. And now that mom's dead, I'm doing everything. And you're going to lose everything if I leave. So I don't. And he's like, we'll get along. Besides, you know, you've been pretty messed up anyway you're late every day you're not concentrating and you're bored here so you need to get out (laughs) wait they're firing her uh not quite it's kind of it's very much a passive aggressive like i know we're not good enough for you and let me tell you why i know we're not good enough for you i know you're better than us so you should just go since you're so much better well, yeah, it's obviously she. You've been phoning it in for a while, now, so you know what? Uh, just, just go. We're, we're, we're. I worked real hard to get you that promotion and to get you out of my department. So yeah, that that seems kind of like weird, backhanded, but 
it's probably a good move for her because obviously that environment is killing her and she needs to get out. Well, you know, she is the most beautiful girl in the room. Um, my favorite backhanded compliment. She could be a part-time model, but she'd probably still have to keep her normal job. Um, <laughs> the hell is that from? Flight of the Concords, man. <laughs> I specifically learned how to play that on guitar so that when I'm at parties and girls that have no intention on ever dating me comes up going, play me a thong. Okay. (laughs) (coughs) But, um, (laughs) again, I'm not as angry as you guys make me out to be. I'm just more honest about what I'm mad about. All right. I don't hold it in. (laughs) Um, But, no, this doesn't turn out the way that you're thinking. It leads directly to a fight because we've got codependent family members talking to a drug addict. So, big fight. Things blow up. She calls Todd. Namaste. Guy a little more. And um, he comes to pick her up. And the little brother is like, no, stay away from my sister, you scumbag, and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, you're lucky your sister's hot. And then they get in the car. They talk. They go for a drive. They do all that stuff. You know, that, that's one of the things that happens. You know, because they don't know, like she doesn't know how's it going and all that stuff. But, you know, let's let's take a bit of a look. Okay. Karen, come back. That's his car, right? Namaste. Woo! No. Don't wait. Come back, big sister. Come back. Penny, and that's the, it's Penny's Place? Hmm? Penny's yes, place Penny's Diner. Place Diner. Karen's mother's name was Penny. Uh, and yeah, so they're talking and, you know, having a fantastic time um, doing, you know, doing some really deep, um, really deep introspective conversation. At least as deep as you can when you're high. <laughs> and doing line after line after line. You know. And. They're good actors because they're not forgetting their lines, which is good. Um, and, you know, one thing leads to another, and she's like, I just need some time to think. I'm doing the thing. And um, so he's like, let's go back to my place. You know, you'll get some sleep. You know, you'll do the thing. You know, and we can just head back and come up with a plan then. And they <clears throat> go back to his place. You know, it must be really dark over a lot of lines. <laughs> and his trailer is on fire. <laughs> well, uh, did little brother have any yeah. Little brother little did brother everything. Look at that. He's like, get away from my sister. And he's like, oh, you're dead. And of course, he pushes her away. Like, he, he's burning down my place to live at my stash. And so he pushes her down. And of course, they do what you would normally do, which is, you know, um, Beat the little brother with a crowbar and backhand your girlfriend as a way to really talk about things um, to have a really interesting and decent way. Uh, a really interesting and decent way to hash things out as adults often do. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I, that, no. What, that's not what your neighborhood's like? Yeah, no. Because, you know. Where I was growing up, as soon as somebody grabbed a crowbar, that's when everybody calmed down and said, all right, let's talk this out. <laughs> let's, just, let's just talk this out. Why'd you set my stuff on fire, man? You know, because. <laughs> but again, Karen, being no slouch, decides to actually pull um, a little bit of diplomacy. I'm actually. assuming diplomacy in the form of, I don't know, a shovel? Um, well, you know. <laughs> Sorry, I went to the wrong part. Ah. Uh, <clears throat> no, she pulled a little bit of diplomacy. Um, there we are. With... <laughs> Fired a warning shot. <laughs> you get away from me, Get Tom. away from my little brother. You get away from my little... Like, no, I'm just going to keep... And, and she shoots him in the arm. And this is important. She shoots him in the arm. Um, I was talking about that with my girlfriend a little earlier today. And she's like... 
well, does he come back? Does it? And I'm like, no, the relationship was pretty much over when he backhanded her. <laughs> like that, that was yeah, pretty much. That, that was pretty much it. You know, not uh, like that. And notice he backhanded her before he shot her or she shot him. Yeah. But she shot him in the arm. She shot to wound because he's smart enough to get the point. Namash, M F N, stay. Yeah. <laughs> or Namas, boom, boom, stay. Yeah. Stay. You know. <laughs> So yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah, getting shot in the arm is gonna kind of ruin your day. You're not gonna be doing much after that. I don't know. Whenever I need to think clearly, I always need a shot in the arm to get my head going. Doesn't generally mean a literal bullet traveling faster than the speed of sound, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, okay, well, I assuming that. Uh, Ooh, she actually. Gets, oh, is NP City saying something? Yeah, NP City is like she can't be. Now, what I didn't, what I didn't talk about NP City, what I didn't talk about, um, pub dude, is um, um, she is. Um, they had a conversation because you know this is this is a summary, not a whole thing. So watch the episode, and it actually shows her sitting up with the drug dealer boyfriend, bruh, and well, his name's Todd. So do I really have to say bruh, Todd? Um. And they're actually shooting ceramic Buddhas with that forty-five in the dark. So they're having a conversation, and blam! When they're discussing college, and he's like, "You know, you can come work for me full si- full size." They're yeah. shooting Buddhas. Well, you know, even the Buddha's impermanent. Now I understand why why in so many stories of Buddhism <laughs> the master gets pissed off and beats the hell out of the apprentice. And then they both have a moment of enlightenment. <laughs> this is a recurring theme. Yeah, well, you know, the Buddha teaches us that the slap pushes the lesson in. You know, so yeah, that is a specific that is a specific form of enlightenment, yes. <laughs> he just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god namaste dude shooting buddhas uh, wow all right i had a lot to unpack someone or had a lot of fun writing that character someone had for a lot the record of fun. that is what cultural appropriation looks like if somebody says i'm not dealing the cultural appropriation and they go blah 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 just tell them daredevil season three episode 10 look at todd <laughs> Yeah, someone had too much fun writing that. They really did. <coughs> yeah, yeah. So and you know. and again, you're right. Like like yeah, I'm sure if anyone out there, hardcore Buddhists would be like, yeah, and <laughs> like you said, Buddhism permanent. Like if you see Buddha on the side of the road, it's like you know you you you're, yeah. There's a whole thing on that. Though there's that's a that's a talk in and of itself. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it, it's but a thing. Generally speaking, it's. Mm, among my people we have a phrase we call that a dick move (laughs) (laughs) your people and my people aren't that much different (laughs) we must be talking about educated people (laughs) Uh, so yeah so you know of course um she then has to take um little brother to the hospital because he's just gotten the crap beaten out of him with a crowbar like his last name was todd and his first name was jason <laughs> and um sorry mixed metaphor one comic book show for another but yeah 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 that, that's what we're doing and um they have that little talk um and again you ever have one of those days <laughs> not like that i never had a day quite like that Bob. why'd you do it why'd you get involved because i already lost mom Watch out. i didn't want to lose you oh damn it no next <laughs> time <laughs> so needless to say little brother does not survive <laughs> So because this this whole summation is running a little too long because we're already at an hour, <clears throat> in a nutshell, all that stuff happened. Her little brother died in a car crash. Her dad confirmed the body. And good old eggs and sausage cop decided that she wasn't there. <laughs> um, it was just a car accident. And that's just what it's going to go down because that family has suffered enough. 
And only in a small town can you get away with this. But yeah, that family suffered enough, so... No, she... Let's just say... We're not going to charge her with vehicular manslaughter because what can we do to her that her own decision-making hasn't done already? <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Nice backstory. Well, <clears throat> now, the thing was, when her dad told her this, he's just like, you weren't there. They're not going to do the manslaughter thing and all that other stuff, but you got to go. I... I I can't look at you. <laughs> I don't want to see you right now. I lost your mother. You took your brother. I, I can't do this. And so her dad lets her know that she's not going to prison, but she can't stay here. Now, <clears throat> this is half of that episode. And the other half is a showdown between Daredevil, Bullseye, and Karen in the church. But... This is the crux of the episode. Like this this is this is the talking point. This is like this is what they were writing. Yeah. And this is important because the juxtaposition of her character in this episode, the the there is a world of difference between comic book Karen Page and television show Karen Page. And truth, I like television show Karen Page so much more. Um in the comic book she got off the bus from the Midwest in Los Angeles to be a movie star and got involved in drugs and ended up doing pornography and then ran away from the Mexican cartels when they wanted her to do pornography for drugs and then she went to New York and became the Karen Page in the books. That's her story. What's your dream? Everyone's got a dream. So. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So, um, much. so in the TV show, they actually gave her a three-dimensional backstory, which yeah. I liked a lot. And Deborah Ann Wall, I gotta say, like I'm developing a mild performer's crush because she plays the heck out of these roles. When she goes manic, like yeah, you know what? Fine, I'm a junkie. I'm a junkie, and blah blah blah. Thanks for the intervention. Wow. I'm like, Ugh. and when she starts crying and like I can't do this anymore, I'm like. Oh my God, when she performs, mm -hmm. I feel things. And keep in mind, I hated that character. Yeah. So I went into this show going, everything Karen Page is going to suck. But this season, oh my God, Deborah Ann Wall just, just, she made the character human, relatable, and sympathetic. And I'm just going, these writers, those directors, that performance. Had she been the character in the comic book, I would understand why Daredevil loves her so hard. Yeah. You know? Oh, later on in the comic, she gets diagnosed with AIDS, and then she ends up killing herself. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So, it's a thing. The comics never liked her. Um, <laughs> and eventually, she did end up selling Daredevil's identity to the Kingpin for drugs in South America. Well, she sold it to her drug dealer for heroin and her drug dealer worked for Kingpin because who doesn't and that's how Kingpin found out um, Daredevil's identity tore his life entirely apart um, from the ground up and then gave his suit to Bullseye which is what we're seeing in this season so that is that's where everything was was came down that's the yeah I'm liking the here. TV version a lot better yeah yeah yeah, yeah. again um, her character in, in the television show I'm like oh my god she's good like really really good um so yeah, um, so the and the second half of the episode, and this is kind of important, so I got to get to that. Um, <clears throat> our last episode ended with, of course, her um, going into <coughs> um, going into um, the church for asylum because she now know that Kingpin wants to kill her <clears throat> because she had the confrontation with Kingpin, and her conversation with Kingpin essentially let him know that um, she killed his best friend. Well, her conversation first let him know that she knows who Daredevil is and that he's right in his assumption, but it was a facial expression. So it was like, you're, you're romantic with Mr. Murdoch. How did you feel about his nighttime proclivities? Then her facial expression changed and he's like, thank you. And that, how did you know? I didn't until now. Mwaha. 
kind of way. Yeah. And she's like, well, you know your friend Owen that disappeared, the only guy that ever cared about you? I shot him seven times. I would have shot him eight, but the gun ran out of bullets. He's not just dead. He is dead AF, and I did it. I killed your best friend. Because you killed my friend for asking your mom questions. Mic drop. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. That, that does seem very Game of Thrones to me when uh, the old it was talking about the poison. Mm. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. you're talking about um, Queen of Thorns. Yeah, Queen of Thorns. That, that, that yeah, tell Cersei that uh, I want her to know it was me. <laughs> It was me. Yeah. I did it. Oh, and by the way, I'm telling you this after I drink the poison because uh, I want to make sure you don't knock it out my hands. <laughs> yeah. You know? There's nothing you can do to me now. I'm gone. So just one last F you before I leave. Right. And, um, oh. yeah. So, um, and it's an interesting thing. Um, yeah, it, it was an interesting thing. Because, um, so the second half of this episode is Kingpin looking at Bullseye, pretty much going, um, yeah, I need you to do something, man. I, I you know, you know, I need, I, I need you to do a thing. <laughs> bra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bra. Um, oh no, it wasn't a bra moment. It was, um. No, no, it was just, you were, you were, the way you said it, it just sounded more like Todd than, than, you know, I need you to do something for me. <laughs> Kingpin is always calm, measured, focused. Bra. True. <laughs> True. But um, yeah, if we take a look, because again, this is this is Vincent D'Onofrio bringing it, you know, because yeah, Vincent D'Onofrio brings it. Copy. There's one more thing we need to do tonight. There's one more thing we need to do tonight. You see, Karen Page is in that church. I don't let people know I don't me. let people know me. Very few have. <laughs> I don't let people in. There was one person. But I had a friend. Floyd. It was one friend. My friend. It was only that one friend. He was like a son to me. He was like James a son Wesley. to me because I knew him. Oh, Wesley. He's I read the news file. Yes. You're like him in many ways. <laughs> you remind me a lot. Like I too was always prepared. Aware and of course... Detail. Of course, I'm talking over all this. He That's why we got the subtitles up, because, you know. Um, because, again, I don't want to get flagged, everybody. He was murdered. And it was like, he disappeared. He was murdered! However, um, that, I, I don't know, Chris. That seems a little hypocritical. When I sent you to the bulletin, you know, it was yeah. You're in the business of murdering Daredevil people and destroying lives and, and preventing people to Well, the fact that one of your people got murdered time, is Karen not Page surprising because one of your people gets murdered like every three seconds. Right. And um, <clears throat> it's an interesting thing there because um, let me see if I can find that part. Give me a second there. Um, yeah. And it was it was a really interesting bit because he's doing this monologue and I have got to love and I mean that I love Bullseye because um he's like, you know, he's just sitting up there like, yeah, I know. Yeah, look, look, man, Mr. Fisk, if there's some just, just get to the point, you want me to do. <laughs> if you want me to do something, just man, ask. I want you to kill you really Karen want me to Page. Do something, just tell me. <laughs> And that is where my love of Kingpin came back because he's like, I'm going to monologue. And he's like, man, what are you asking me? To I want you to kill her. Okay. <laughs> cool. Cool. And so the episode ends on a fight scene. So um, I'm actually looking for. <laughs> yeah. Is it in the hallway? Huh? Is it in the hallway? It's throughout the entire church. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. Um, yeah, <clears throat> but in a nutshell, you know, that is, that was one of the things that came down. And honestly, I, I thought it was brilliant, just brilliant all the way across the board because, um, everything that he was talking about there, I'm just like, good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Look at him. He's like, oh my God, I didn't know. Oh, mm. and it's like, Mr. Fisk, um, what you need me to do, bro? I need you to kill him cool you know um 
Yeah, what? <laughs> what? I'm just a bullseye. I need to get a bullseye flicks a fork out the window. So anyway, now what do you want me to do? <laughs> 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 yeah, I just, I, I just, what do you need me to do? I want you to kill him. Okay, hang on. And? What do you need me to do now? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, so that, that really became a thing. Mm-hmm. That, that became a thing. So all in all, this, um, this, this episode was pretty intense. And I really like, and I, I, I mean that. I really, really enjoyed. Um, um, I enjoyed the entirety of the episode for giving three dimensions to Karen Page. Mm-hmm. That was really important to me um, because there's so, so many, so many, and so often times that you know you get a female protagonist and they literally aren't worth a whole. They're really not worth the stuff that they're printed on. They're mm-hmm. really not. Um, yeah, it's a thing. I'm just I'm I am losing it today with the um with the um with the switching back and forth. I'm still a bit tired. Um, but yeah, um, <clears throat> with the going back and forth, it was it, it's tough um, showing a female protagonist that was that's actually worthwhile. So. They showed it. They made her three-dimensional. They gave her a much better origin because left, right, sideways, she was just in a bad position. It was like the moment her mom died. Um, there's a scene with the lottery ticket that I didn't show you guys in there. But, yeah, left, right, sideways. It, it was just she was in a messed up spot from day one. Yeah. So this one really, really, really well written. Um, I was very happy with that. Um, with the episode. What I didn't like about it was the fight scene was a little bit contrived. Um, the fight scene essentially has a moment of, um, of what's the term I'm looking for? Bullseye knocks out a bunch of windows with rosary beads. There, I said it. Okay. Yeah. Seems kind of excessive. Yeah, he breaks rosary beads and tries flinging them at Karen Page, and he's doing it with so much force that the windows that they're hitting are breaking. And I'm like, you know, he is deadly accurate, and he can do a lot of cool things, but the scientist in me is not quite, not quite there, not quite there. Yeah, he. I mean, yeah, it, he's precision, not strength. Yeah, so um, that kind of took me out of it just a little bit, so... Um, let me see if I can move over here because I got to give this one. My rating on this one is, um, oh, ow, ow. Sorry, I didn't push the button right. There we go. Uh, yeah, my rating on this one is a full house. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it's definitely a full house. Yeah, by the way, you like the new graphic? Huh? Mm-hmm. I've been working. I've been working. Um, <laughs> yeah, I got to say, it, it, it's a full house. Uh, what did it sound like to you? Like, you know, I know you didn't watch the episode, but... If you were to watch it, what do you think you would give it based on what I said? Ooh, uh, I don't know. I don't have as much of engagement with Karen Page's character one way or the other, so mm-hmm. I probably would have given it maybe three of a kind. You know, I kind of thought you were going to say that. Yeah, you know? okay, yeah, 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 kind of a three of a kind. Yeah, yeah, that, that's yeah I mean, it sounds like a, it sounds like a good episode, but I'm just really not. Is. I'm not invested in the Karen Page story arc as much as you are, just because you have that back that that history with her. Yeah, and. Um, Although it is kind of funny to see uh, Bullseye telling Fist to stop monologuing and just tell me what you want. I'm, <laughs> a, I'm, I'm a psychopath. I literally am incapable of caring. You know, <laughs> it reminds me a lot of like late nights with me and my girlfriend, where it really is just just ask me for what you want. What is it that you want? What did you want? And I'm like, honey, well, you know, I was thinking, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe. What do you want? I'm trying to go to sleep. Can we go get ice cream tomorrow? Fine. Just let me go to bed. You know, kind of thing. So, so yeah. <laughs> well, hey. What? <laughs> yeah, that's a thing. Uh, <laughs> Did I so, just get played off? No. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I wasn't hitting you with Oscars, all right? I wasn't saying, wrap it up, B. <laughs> wrap it up. <laughs> you know, no, no, no. So, all right. So, Cloak and Dagger. Season finale. All right, this is the big one. Episode 10. Episode 10. Colony 
collapse. Ooh, now, good that's man. important because that's a callback to the earlier episode where uh, Tandy talks with the environmental scientists about all the bees disappearing from the bayou. Message. <laughs> all right. Well, this is this episode is a little, it, uh, this episode is a little interesting because it is interspaced the entire each interspaced with small vignettes of Auntie narrating all the his the oral history of the uh, celestial pairings, starting off with the uh, the uh, the two young children from the Choctaw t- tribe. One has to die to end the end the famine. That's right. It it opens with um, and yeah. The whole thing opens and, with like, all right. We've been talking about this divine parent like all season. Yeah. Let, let let let's just show all the ones yeah. that led up to this one. So they, they she goes through that, and they also show through the cinema that the person the member of the divine pairing who has to sacrifice themselves to uh, uh, end the great bad always has a mark on their arm, and it's always the same mark. This kind of like smudge bruise thing and that's important there's the first one there's the mark there we go so there's the smudge bruise which i actually think is like a just a jumbo sharpie drawn across their arm hey man you got to work with your budget <laughs> but uh so throughout the entire episode and he will tell another story of the various divine pairings and about how they ended the tragedy famine storm plague war Yes, they're actually. It'll be a party they're actually to remember. Accredited with, with, ending like the one of the great battles of the Civil War was was ended because you know someone died and so you know it, it's and that happens it's interspaced with the action so I'm not going to keep going to all the different stories just just know that it's there but it's one thing she keeps driving home there's always two one must die <laughs> and uh, so then we jump. Back into the middle of the action with uh, Tandy's mom being held at gunpoint by assassin water girl. <laughs> water, uh, water delivery assassin. And uh, it's real funny because Tandy, because she's like, stay back or I'll shoot her. And Tandy's just walking up. Why? I'm unarmed. <laughs> and you're like, okay, I see how this is going to play out. Yeah, this is, I, I know exactly what's going to ha- happen because yeah, Tandy's getting closer. Stay back, stay back. And I Jen- ain't be got no weapon. Uh-huh. Why you hold a gun on me? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just a little girl. What possibly could I do to you? And while she is distracted with Tandy being kind of sketchy and weird, and I know something's going on, <laughs> that's when Mom's like, "Okay, I'm done." Grabs a grabs a butter <laughs> knife and stabs the woman. <laughs> yeah. And look, Tandy's mom is a badass. <laughs> So, so rephrase that. Sober Tandy's mom is a badass. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, she, she stabs is, her she with is. a butter knife, knocks her down, grabs the gun. While Tandy and her are scrambling, Tandy does manage to manifest her her, mm-hmm. her light blade and slice her. But that doesn't mom matter because mom's got the whole situation handled and drives off the attacker. Yeah. Well, and, you say drive off. We say, huh? I slash your leg, and then mom is like, well, that's good. I got your gun, and there's a silencer. Yep. <laughs> so. so you know mom doesn't know that supernatural powers are being used that pretty much just plays mom's like i don't know what went on but we, <laughs> we, <don't> know. Happen. <laughs> we won so uh um so that uh so that was intense and we find out you know, like i said mom's mom's competent tandy is you know getting stuff done and then tandy goes to go check on the environmental scientists and encounters a terror now, this is where Tandy, being Tandy, remember an early episode where Tandy Groundhog Day for like a thousand years in a, mm-hmm. in a, in a terror-infested nightmare scape, and she got real good at killing terrors <laughs> and throwing cards into a hat? Well, those skills play out well because she murders the ton of terrors. And the whole time this is happening, in the back of my head, I'm, I'm, I'm hearkening back to the red, uh, pink eye episode of South Park. Where they're like, whatever you do, don't kill the zombies. Just kill the lead zombie and everyone will be fine and it's revert. Like, and then they're like, oops, we've been like, totally like mulching wrong. zombies the entire time. So yeah, Candy is fighting to defend herself, but she murder stabs a lot of people <laughs> in this episode. 
as you can see, blood on the blade. And I know in the comic it is a healing knife that cures drug addiction. But in oh, the, no, make no mistake, in the in the comic, it cuts the crap out of people. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think having a healing blade stabbed through your heart still going. To, well, look, good news is it did one pl- one d four healing, it, but it inflicted one d twenty damage. <laughs> Don't roll badly. And judging by the look on the guy's face. He's dead. <laughs> and just so you know, that happens a lot in this episode. She is she does not pull any punches and she murders any to any terror that gets in her way, gets shivved. Yeah. And she's the bearer of light and hope. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> so uh now she's the understander mm-hmm. of hope. Yeah. She she's this yeah. So uh she manages to save the environmental science, and that's when they have the epiphany of what happened. Well, the pipe blew, and then, oh no, I put pipes all over the city. It's Mardi Gras. This could be bad. And they look at the system and realize that every single valve is about to explode and release terror gas in New Orleans during Mardi Gras parade. <laughs> Pretty much the worst case scenario. Yeah, what do you mean terrible? It's not like it it didn't work for Jack Nicholson. <laughs> okay, yeah, party okay. man. Yeah. Party man. <laughs> Rock party life. Okay, go on. <laughs> so, then we come back to Ty. And Ty is at the uh, uh, tribal warehouse looking for the cloak. Because he needs the cloak. The cloak is his magic feather that lets his powers work. And he needs to find it. And it's missing. And he turns around and that's where his dad's dad is there holding the cloak looking stricken and there's a real great there's a really awesome moment between ty's and his father where he says i know what you're gonna say and ty's dad's like you don't know what i'm gonna say i don't know what i'm gonna say (laughs) and then he does the awesome thing he goes i just got a word from your mom that they're looking for you for killing a cop because i didn't kill a cop of course i know you didn't do that we know who you are you gotta leave and never come back don't call us. Don't send us a postcard. Just go. And I'm like, Dad is being awesome. He knows he's not. He's not. I'm gonna fight this or what? No, no. He's getting his son safety and knows that his son's gonna have to disappear forever. Now, it's funny that you mentioned that whole thing of Dad. I, this whole season, especially when it comes to Ty and his family, yeah. it's look, Mom. I know what you're gonna say. <laughs> no, you don't, baby. Because my life is a lot more grim than you think. It's my job as a parent to to keep you with hope. And I know what you're gonna say, Dad. No, you don't. Mm-mm. You don't know what I'm gonna say. I don't know what I'm gonna, I'm gonna say. But they want you for killing a cop. I didn't kill a cop. No. <laughs> <laughs> they say you did, so you gotta go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's, there, there's that awesome kind of superhero Batman moment where the dad turns around because the cops are literally walking into the room and mm-hmm. they're being kind of delayed by the rest of the tribe subtly and uh, uh, he goes maybe I can sneak you out the back and he turns around and Ty's gone mm-hmm. from a room with no exits bum, bum, bum. and the dad back. is like alright All right. <laughs> okay kids got skills kids got skills I've done my job alright <laughs> Good spa boy. <laughs> yeah. So um, at that point, uh, there's a lot of Ty f- uh, running around in his cloak, which he blends because it's It looks mummy. so amazing. <laughs> I mean, like, seriously, man, that that cloak, just, just look at that. Yeah. Oh, the and he blends because it's Mardi Gras. That's when he's supposed to be wearing it. Yeah. So he's running around, and he's, he's trying to, like, make his way but the problem is the cops are out in force specifically looking for him well it is mardi gras yeah but no but yeah yeah but they're also looking for him like and they see what him do you mean? it's just the biggest party week of the of the city's entire year and they just happen to be looking for a little black cop killer what could go wrong <laughs> well and he's he's moving through the crowd and he's doing some some short jumps to avoid detection jumping from one side of the street to the other and he's and he's but he's cornered and he can't make it out. And that's when Latte Ra- Latte Cop skids up for the rescue. Come with me if you want to live. And he looks around and he's like, crap, we're surrounded by cops. They're drawing down. She's like, do your thing. He goes, I can't. There's too many people watching. That part, <laughs> I didn't quite get because he had no problem doing it before when people were shooting at him. Um, Again, a lot of performance anxiety. He's concerned about the consequences. But you know what's interesting? I ended up watching The Mask. 
like two weeks ago because my girlfriend put it on. <clears throat> and I'm getting real tired of that scene in every superhero TV show, movie, comic book. And the trope is starting to get old of, oh no, I'm cornered. And then, unexpected ally, get in the car, I'll save you. You know, it, it's getting kind of old. Yeah. They did set that up two episodes earlier, though, when she heard the call that they were looking for him, and mm-hmm. she immediately jumped in the car and sped off. <laughs> so she knew it was going to happen, and she's also been looking for him. Yeah. So at least they at least they, they foreshadowed that a little bit, so it wasn't like a complete shock. We knew that scene was coming one way or the other. But uh, so they get caught, they get dragged in, and, oh, look, we don't put them in jail we don't book them we lock them in the evidence locker and put a guard on them and then they have the discussion of why that's happening that's so when yeah. they murder them there's no paper trail yeah and then you get you get ty looking over and he's like why am i in an evidence closet like what well, hello what what what's going on here <laughs> you know yeah. and again he doesn't have his cloak but technically he could leave at any moment mm-hmm. if he well, really if he really had to yeah, and um, this is this is an interesting scene because um, oh, I love I Louisiana love this. or yeah. New Orleans specifically is a living, breathing city unto itself, and this is an important thing mm-hmm. because um, a lot of, and you see this in a lot of the TV, but there's a lot of people who were born in New Orleans have a special sort of pride about being born in New Orleans because that city has gone through it <laughs> ever since the Louisiana Purchase. It's like the gods have been trying to tear that city off of the planet. And they're like, nope, we still here, Cher. That's, that's what we doing, uh-huh. And, um, and being born and raised there, talking to other people that were born and raised there, they have this thing going Yeah. where it's like, and you grew up here, so you know that. And you are one of us, so you know that. And, um, yeah, th- that comes to bear in this episode. Yeah, and, and Ty has a... Because then they start having the conversation. Because, of course, Latte Cop is trying to talk to the guard, cop to cop, you know, why are you doing this? You know it's wrong. And he's like, e- go back. You're from New York. You're not from here. You don't get to talk to me. And that's when Ty chimes in, but I am from here, mm-hmm. born and raised. And, you know, he talks about his family, his parents. And he reaches the guy Mm -hmm. like the guy's like yeah kid you're right you're right you you're a stand-up kid you're local and this is wrong and he is about to let him go he's about to let him go and walk away and be like i don't know what happened i guess they escaped end of episode except at that moment where he's about to do it that's when another cop walks in and is like oh no we we, you're out (laughs) oh we got this and that's when, you know, uh, uh, Narcotic Cop sh- shows up for some taunting. And uh, um, so that didn't quite go as well as mine because I was like, oh, that's great. He's going to get not. Nah, nah. <laughs> He's like, damn it. That will require something going good for Ty. Did you not watch the last nine episodes? And then it goes good for Ty. <laughs> But I rolled a nat 20 on my diplomacy roll. Yeah, yeah, but the GM still hates you. That's why <laughs> the cop in the evidence room didn't shoot you in the face immediately. Yeah. Now we continue with the scene. <laughs> <laughs> so then we cut back to uh, Tanny and environmental cop are, you know, trying to figure out how they're going to deal with this. And Tandy confronts dirty CEO dude in the elevator. Again, blowing knife to the throat. And he's like, oh, you're back. How nice. <laughs> and they have a quick conversation about, you know, how the system's going to blow. And, and, and it's great because she goes, what could you possibly want what's under the city? And he goes, it's power. And yeah. well, what, do you, what does power give you? Power. More power. <laughs> In a world with the Starks <laughs> and names of a couple other names, like we have to keep up with the Joneses. In other words, well, we need our companies falling behind because the rest of the... Other CEOs are using super tech from alien alien spaceships. What do we got? Real quick, when he says you got to with how with places around like Stark, he's not talking Game of Thrones. This is part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah. So he's talking about Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, he's like, there's Iron Man up there, and I have a tech company. So you know, I yeah. I, I, I produce energy, and this dude produces energy from something he made in a cave that puts a nuke in the palm of your hand and it's stable 
Yeah, I this gotta guy's, keep paying them bills, y'all. Yeah, this guy's pacemaker produces more energy than three of our power plants combined. <laughs> so we need to up our game. And you know, I've already established that I'm a, a moral asshole who will just do anything. Proof again that Tony Stark is the bad guy of the Marvel universe. <laughs> so, uh, so she's like, uh huh. So she's like, where's the, where? How do we shut it down? She already knows how to shut it down. She's done it a hundred times in in the uh, mm-hmm. Terror Dome. So he explains that it's at a substation, and they have a conversation. And then Tandy does a beautiful, horrible thing. She jacks into his mind, into the place of his true hopes, into this Eden-like garden where he's looking around, and he's like, it's so beautiful. It's all his hopes. And he's like, she's like, what is it that you really want? And he goes, I want power. And he goes, oh, you want to you wanna know God? I want to be God. And she points at that door that she couldn't go through without Ty's, uh, Ty's help. And she goes, everything you ever wanted is yeah. right in there. And See, he happily so hard, walks through the door. And yeah, that, yeah. yeah. She's like, hey. Ah, it's so beautiful. So, yep. Ah, 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 okay. Look, it's heaven. Look at me. Yeah. Where are we? We the are, hopes. We're in the place that you hope was real. This is this, the, this is the inside. This is what is you really want. Really, really, you really want, want. So tell me what you want. What you really, really you want. want. Oh, I'll God. tell you what I want. I what I really, God. really want. Right I want to be door. God. You want to what? I want to be God. You want to yep. zinga zinga. Ah. So she's like, everything you ever desire is behind that door. So she shows them heaven and then shows them the door to hell. And it's like, yeah. happily walks through. Oh my god, everything I want to everything, it's all in there. She's like, uh, yeah, yeah. That was, okay, that was some straight up evil. That was entirely justified. I'm like, yeah. Okay, you, starters, there's no way you're having a good alignment with that one, but. You know what? That was her Sansa Stark moment. Yeah. That was her, you haven't fed your dogs in a week. You said so yourself. So I'm going to just leave you tied to that chair to explain to your dogs why you haven't fed them in a week. Okay? I'm just going to stand right here. Stand right here. And the dogs are like, hey, why ain't you fed me for a week? Mmm, face. I like face. You ain't fed me a face in a week. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, that was disturbing. Uh, but, you know, she, she, she does that. And I'm like, mm, okay. Now, uh, meanwhile, uh, we, uh, meanwhile, uh, Ty is about to get taken out into buried into a shallow grave in, in somewhere in the bayou but that's when <laughs> um, quick thing there's nothing but shallow graves in the in the bayou but well, we get your point yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry uh, i'm lost being that guy lost my train but he's about uh, to get put in a shallow grave yeah. in the bayou and and uh but that's when <laughs> oh those wacky terrors attack <laughs> and oh uh, you know uh, all of a sudden everybody is kung fu fighting everybody <laughs> th- <laughs> things are going crazy <laughs> in the chaos ty gets free he's like i need my cloak where's the stuff you took from me he gets his cloak he's good he's on the run latte's on the run Narcotics cop is chasing him because, uh, yeah, he 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 had a th- he had a schedule to keep, mm-hmm. and even though it appears to be some kind of zombie apocalypse breaking out outside, that's not gonna that's not gonna. Ain't got time out. for that. Ain't got time for that. Also, while this is all going on, so Tandy is on the run from. Uh, they're they're trying to they're trying to get to the place to shut down the crazy, and she's and sure enough, that's when our uh, assassin uh, water girl shows up again and starts taking pot shots. And uh, well, in like another moment, in another moment of uh, appropriateness, she gets taken out by terrors. <laughs> well, you know, <clears throat> when you don't want to make um, a confrontation happen, you just send the minions. Minions. Well, it was it was very much a it was very much a early Walker episode of like, oh look, I'm going to shoot at you with a gun. Yeah, all the zombies go after the loud noise, so mm-hmm. you're the one with the gun. Guess what? That's what they're doing. You get mobbed. You get. Beaten, bitten, I don't know. Um, you know, well, we can always ask trash from Return of the Living Dead. Yeah. And uh unfortunately, Ty also gets swarmed and his beautiful cloak gets absolutely shredded. Dude, my heart broke. My heart broke 
at that scene. I'm like, no, no, not the. You know how long that embroidery took? No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah, the the cloak really is a character in and of itself, and you can see it die horribly. Yeah. And uh, he manages to get away, and uh, but he no longer has his cloak. So he and Tandy re- regroup at the church, and he's like, I, I'm I'm done. You know, I, I don't have my thing anymore. And she's like, I got something for you. And she gives him back the hoodie. Let's take the a look. F- first thing she ever stole. Yeah, let's take a look. Whole city's running wild with Ivan's terrors. I don't know, Ty. <laughs> He's like, I think I'm we so lost. tired. I'm so tired. tired of being me right what now. What happens now? Uh, what happens is you two are going to come at the problem. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. This is Avita's this is intro. intro. Avita yeah. Avita shows up. And she explains it all. She lays it out that this is a thing that happens in New Orleans, and that best girlfriend right. ever. And uh, lays it out, and is like, "You two, you got to, you got to do, you got to do what you got to do. You got to take us out." Bad news is, one of you's got to die. That's the way it is. I don't make the rules. I'm just here to tell you <laughs> what the rules are. I'm not happy about it, and I wish I could do more, but I can't. And, and, and Tandy's like, "I've been in your head. I know you mean that." Like, mm-hmm. I, I know what kind of person you are. Thank you. And so, and then, you know, she, she has her piece, says what they did. They, they now know that they need to, like, pony up, ride out, take out the source, deal with the problem, and one of them isn't coming back. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of discussion about that, but that they know they have a plan and what they need to do. And when, Avita, when they leave, Vita Vita leaves, Tandy looks over at Ty and goes, you need to lock that down. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, that is the best girl. Trust me, that is the best girlfriend ever. From the worst girlfriend ever, I can tell you, best girlfriend ever. And that was when they solidified, like, we gonna be friends whether you like it or not. And um, as your friend, I'm telling you, lock that down. Yeah. <laughs> no, lock it down. For, there is no will we, won't we. You need her. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> And I, I particularly did like that they did that in the show. Yeah. I really did. I'm just like, finally, because I hate the well, we've got a we've got a girl star and a guy star, so we have to put the tension in the will they won't they because that's what the customers want to see. No, it's not what we want to see. We want we want to actually see good friend. We want to see an attractive person tell another attractive person to go for someone else and mm. mean it. Yeah. You know. I mean that that's that's real. So, well, and also Tandy's a hot mess, so <laughs> she's made a lot of work. <laughs> oh yeah, and Ty is Mr. Neat. <laughs> you know. Yeah, but he doesn't have the back. He doesn't have nearly the baggage that he that uh, uh, See, Tandy has. I would disagree on that. I just think I think their baggage is equal. They just handle and cope in completely well, different she ways. She specifically has dysfunctional relationship baggage. Baggage. Yes. Yes. So. And he specifically has isolationism and perfectionism baggage. Yeah, baggage. So, so they have different things they got to overcome. But uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, so uh, meanwhile, um, uh, narcotics cop is chasing latte cop through the city because <laughs> zombie apocalypse. Don't care. <laughs> no one got time for that. And they have a confrontation and he shoots her lots of times, but she's smart enough to be wearing a bulletproof vest. So it hurts, but it isn't killing her. And they have a bit of a monologue, and then he manages to, he, he shoots, misses, but happens to rupture the uh, valve that she's leaning on, blasting her with crazy juice, and then knocking her into the bayou. Poop. And Bye, you're, latte. Cup. And you're like, you're like, wow, this is like a classic a super villain backstory. Okay, <laughs> we'll be seeing her again. I'm glad you caught that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really glad you caught that. So I know you haven't read comics in years and years yeah. and years, and you weren't really into Marvel or DC or Image, but <laughs> I'm glad you know the tropes well enough to oh, be yeah. like, oh, yeah, know that. She'll be back. Yeah, she I, I mean, it, the only way they could have been more tropey if she had fallen into a vat of toxic waste <laughs> after being blasted <laughs> with cosmic energy. While being bitten by radioactive animals of many, many types. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, so I'm like, okay, yeah, she'll be back. Um, and uh, then we get, to, so they're about to get into the building where the, the pumping station is so they can shut down the <laughs> pumping station. And that's cool because they've Groundhog Day, Day this enough. So that's what that stupid tutorial episode was about. Yeah. All right, how to stop the big bat. And uh, that's when um, 
Narcotic cop shows up yet again, shotgun in hand, and Ty's like, are we going to keep doing this? Like, I'm kind of done with you. <laughs> and, and it's like, no, I'm done with you. And then they have a great moment where he's like, wait a minute, I can teleport. And we discover, surprise, surprise, he can take people with him. Because he teleports a lot. <laughs> teleports Narcotics Cop and is doing the whole thing, holding him off the edge of the building, going, I can do this all day. You should be scared of me. I'm I'm done being scared of you. It's a great, it's actually a great Thai speech. He has some awesome speeches, by the way. Yeah. It's yeah, a great Thai does. speech where he talks about, because this guy has been the, this has been the focus of his life for the last few years. And he has that Phew. big comp. Com He's been Thai's boogeyman. Yeah. For eight years. And eight years to a 16-year-old is literally half of their life. Yeah, and he's like, I'm done being tired with, scared of you. You should be scared of me. I, I'm the guy with superpowers. You're a jackass with a gun. <laughs> and you've been trying to shoot me for the last year, and it hasn't been working. And I'm done with that. You should be scared of me. Are you scared? And the guy's like, yeah. Yeah, I'm scared. Complete roll over, complete power reversal. Ty is breaks breaks the the cycle, frees himself, and is like, "I'm done." Mm -hmm. And the guy, you're right, you win. And Ty's like, "Finally, now I can get back to the important part." Oh look, Jackass is pulling out his his holdout mm -hmm. piece from his ankle and goes to shoot Ty. And Ty's just like, "Oh no, you don't!" And then suddenly. Yep. Much to his surprise, the darkness reaches out and compared to that thing when yeah. you and I touched. Yeah. And Ty's like, what the hell is happening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the look on Ty's face of I'm not comfortable with this. And then no. the guy's gone. Never to be seen again. We don't know <laughs> what happened to him. Yeah, oh, uh, here we go. Yeah, you got that scene. That's a great Yeah. This whole scene yeah. Are I, you I, scared now? Good. Alright. You know what? You ain't worth dropping. You, you, you yeah. ain't worth it. He's not going to be that guy. He's going to walk away. Dude, I'm a better you person than you are. Oh, for and real? <laughs> and then it's like... And the best part is... Zip. It's not some... The, the, way, that, the way that's lensed, it's not something that Ty does. Mm -hmm. It's something that happens. It's something that happens because Ty gave him a choice. Mm -hmm. And he chose... He, he chose poorly, and the <laughs> abyss ate him. Yeah, and if, I mean, take a look at Ty's face. He's like, what the, another yeah. complication I don't need. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because it wasn't Ty's rage or Ty doing that or, no, it was the abyss flowing through Ty. Justice! Yeah, so it's like, okay. So, again, kind of a weird dichotomy of the horrible evil of fear and all-devouring hunger Reaches through Ty to take what it is owed, and Ty's like, "I'm not, I'm not happy being the avatar <laughs> of darkness." Meanwhile, the avatar of hopes and dreams and purity is like, "Yeah, I'm gonna lead you down the primrose path to hell." <laughs> like, okay, they're having a lot of fun playing with the dualities of this. Yeah, yeah, they are. And um, so then they have the big conversation and the big confrontation of who's, you know. Who's who's gonna sacrifice themselves? And that's when we discover that Ty has has the mark. The mark. And even Ty's like, that's why we have the powers that we have. I have the power to be where I need to be, so I can get there first. And Tandy's like, oh no, you don't. You are not throwing yourself away to save me, because I am a dumpster fire. <laughs> and you are the one decent person in my life. You are not doing this. And he's like, I'm sorry. Bamf! And she's like, oh no, you don't. <laughs> yeah. So he teleports in, he starts doing the shutdown, she's running in after him, and the shutdown isn't working. Just like it, they, they do it, they cannot, it's almost as if the energy doesn't want to be diverted. It doesn't want to be capped, because it doesn't. Well, and, you know, magic. Yeah, magic. Like, there's no way to stop this. And and then they have a really, and, and she's like, I'm, I'm going with you. If you're going, I'm going. And then the, as soon as she says that, she burns herself on the pipe and she gets a matching mark on her arm. It's like fate went, okay, well, if you choose, both of you go, okay. And uh, we had talked about this earlier off camera. It's very interesting. This is the first time in all of the tellings of the history where the divine pairing work together. 
and in, in times they were odds or they were handing the t handing off from one to the other or one was just an observer of the event but this is the first time where they're like no we are doing this together uh-huh and then they also have the comment of that the, whole backdraft thing of you go we, we go. go you know yeah and and uh, obviously fate heard them because she suddenly gets the matching mark i.e. there are, there's some kind of mystical forces at play here <laughs> and then they're talking about how the energy hurts and how the build up feels almost like when we, they, they first touched and blew each other across the room and Ty has that epiphany of no it feels exactly like that and they're mm -hmm. like wait it couldn't be that easy could it and they're like but this power is our power so they grab hands stand in the middle of the vortex and siphon this infinite reservoir of terror and joy through themselves and sp shoot it straight into space let's take a look mm -hmm. good yeah and the whole time i'm like... just thinking somewhere there's a krill ship going what the Long in all the darkness and all the light in the sky, uh, and channels in the sky. Yeah. By the way, I love the. I, I, I actually really like the uh, soundtrack to this one. You know, we're I looked up the soundtrack. Completely opposite on that. <laughs> I, w I was digging the soundtrack. I actually looked it up because there was one song specifically I wanted, and it wasn't on the soundtrack. Which one? It was Wolves. Wolves? Yeah. It's okay. one of the chase scene songs. Oh, okay. About how the wolves will chase you and eat you. And I'm okay. like, that's a cool song. I want to I want to add that song to my to my playlist. And I'm like, it's not on the, it's the only song that's not on the album. I finally found it. Oh, all right. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so that there there was that. And then you see that they're, they're passed out on top they of the building. They kind of. There's also kind of a funny thing. They kind of look very suggestive. You know? Yeah. Uh, that that uh, was, you know, one of them should have a cigarette now or something. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the funny thing about that is they start out in the basement of the building. When it's over, they're on the roof of the building. But yeah. of course, you know, teleportation magic. Yeah, exactly. And uh, there is a, a bit of a wrap up after that. Obviously, they, they've they've weathered the great uh, calamity, mm -hmm. and because they chose to sacrifice both of themselves, both of them survive. Right. One must live, one must die. Of course, the whole time they're saying that, I'm thinking in the back of my head, but they already died once. Yeah, yeah, that like, is a very, like, that's a point that nobody really talked about because, again, I it's it stands to reason that they may not have died. Um, remember, his power is teleportation. Yeah. So it's possible that he bamfed them out of there. We don't well, know that. Yeah, but I, I just got the impression that, that Tandy died in the car because mm. he pulled her out and uh so i always thought and so you know there's just this whole it's one of those things you watch the episode discuss go back watch <laughs> that first episode watch the last episode discuss again trust mm -hmm. me it, it's I, whoever whoever made this really loved playing with the duality and the the some of the some of the iconic imagery here but we we have a bit we have the wrap up now Ty still still wanted for a uh, uh, murder. However, Cop killing. However, <laughs> the person who was behind it has just vanished without a trace. So it all just might go away because there really there is no evidence linking him except that narcotics cop said so, mm -hmm. and everyone fell in line because he said so. He was connected. He was made. Well, he's gone now. <laughs> yeah, his whole little empire. Poof. Yeah, and it's interesting that the show ends with Tandy back at home. Yes, and Ty living in the church. Yes, so 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 Ty is now hiding out in Tandy's church. Tandy goes moves back in with her mom and holds up a newspaper that says "Rocks on to blame." <laughs> that thing she said she wanted to do—that's what she truly wanted to happen. Finally happens. She and her mom are, are working on their relationship, uh, and um, the. Uh, uh, Assassin goes back to find her CEO boss. Like, what are we gonna do now? And he's in a catatonic state. Mm -hmm. So he's out of the. So he's he's gotten his. So the two big bads of this have gotten their comeuppance, and um, and that's where we leave it. 
Like, obviously, yeah. there's going to be more. No, but... I feel really bad for Ty's mom. I got to say, oh, Ty's there was... mom goes through it. In but this there, uh, yeah, actually, it's good with me. There's a great mm-hmm. scene with Ty's mom because she's sitting in the living room. The cops are still going. The forensics is still there, going over everything with a fine tooth comb, trying to find anything to, 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 to incriminate her son. And she hears a noise upstairs, and she's like, oh, crap. Did he come back? He's not supposed to come back. And she walks upstairs, and as she walks upstairs, the family photo is missing from the wall. Mm-hmm. And she goes into the bedroom, and all his clothes have been rifled through, and half his stuff is gone. And she just gets this. She looks around. There's no sign he's ever been there except for the missing clothes. And she gets this smile like, my son's okay. Yeah, yeah, he good. He, he's my good. My son is good. The interesting thing, if we take a close look at this scene. I, I, it's, um, a, uh, it's a very much a uh, Stephen King storyline moment of the, the boy the boy is all right yeah there's a story right. where the woman kept thinking that's her cat that was echoed through her mind the boy is okay i really hate to say this but she is so gorgeous that like you know that, dude that's ty's mom your mom's hot dude shut up now if you notice if you really notice in this yeah a few of the clothes are missing but he left the basketball jersey you yeah. know, that was a really... That's the, that's that, the Wolf song, by the way. Yeah, okay, yeah. That, that's a really important thing to point out where he takes all this other stuff. But we open on Ty and the character being tormented by basketball. So when he finally takes his whole life under his whole thing mm. and he goes back to get the stuff from home, he leaves the thing that torments him, but it's also the thing that made his mother proudest. Yeah. So he kind of left it for her and said, I'm moving on. You know I have to move on, but I left this to remember me fondly. And I'm like, good piece of direction. Yeah. A good piece of direction. So. Yeah. Yeah. That, that scene, again, this looks, she's like, the boy's okay. Yeah. He's, let's... he's going to survive. Yeah. Now, obviously, he has some skills because he, he, <laughs> he walked into a house filled with police looking for him, walked out, none of them noticed. Uh-huh. So. And she's like, what the hell was that noise? Did, yeah. Oh. Well, so, you know. Not sure how he's doing it, but he's gonna be okay. And uh, from also from a superhero, that's a good way to resolve like the family. Yeah, like, he 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 loves his family, but his family knows that he can never contact them. Mm-hmm. So later on in the season, if he does contact his family, because again, teleport, I can pretty much show up whenever I want to. Uh, that'll be a nice that that'll probably be a very moving moment mm-hmm. when when the family you can't be here. He's like it's okay. They they yeah. don't know. Now, see, the distraction from the Indians during Mardi Gras, that was a really good one um, for me because, again, do you remember what his father's position and his brother's position was in the tribe? Uh, you remember when they said that? They were the scouts, the, uh, the spy, boys. spy boys. Yeah, first one into trouble, but, yeah, they're scouts, they're rogues, they're, they're rogues and rangers. So they get out, they get in, they go in by themselves, they get out by themselves. Mm-hmm. And it was like Ty was perfect for that. Oh, yeah. When with they, the teleportation and the darkness. And yeah. Yeah. When they first described that, I, I, even then you could see like on Ty's face, he's like, well, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's and then later thing. on when he says, that's why I have this power so I can get there first. Mm hmm. Yeah. So again, with the themes and all that stuff. So, so they, that it looks like that I, I'm thinking that for uh, the next season, they're probably going to do some more. They're, they're going to swap the roles. Ty is now going to be the one that, that hiding out in the church, hiding from from his uh, his life, while Tandy's the one having the normal kind of like teenage existence, and there'll be this weird role reserved for Ursel. And I have a feeling this series is just going to be Ty can't get a break. Not oh, possibly. So here's the question. And this is a two parter, uh-huh. two part question uh. because that is the series or the season finale. What would you rate the episode, and then what would you rate the season as a whole? Oh, episode is hard. Um, do, 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 do. I'm gonna have to say for the episode, there was some stuff I really liked, but it was also a little, a little jarring with the 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 juxtaposition mm-hmm. of, the, of the narration back. I know what they were doing, but I, I I wanted to see action more, so I'm gonna say four of a kind. Um, four of a you know, a four of a kind is pretty much a really high thing. But well, okay, well, four of a kind really? Yeah, what, what what's below four of a kind? Uh, I don't play poker, guys. Okay. Ah, uh, no. Nah, statement game. stands. You said it. You said okay. it is right there. Four of a kind. Yeah. Four of and, a kind. And the series as a whole, definitely a full house. Uh, so I, I I highly recommend you watch it. If 
you are a film analysis geek, <laughs> this is a really good film to watch. I mean, if you're taking film analysis, you've got at least five essays just going through this series <laughs> just because they, they, they are playing with the, the dualities, the archetypes, you know, the uh, good, evil, male, feminine, uh, uh, masculine, feminine, all that stuff. It's all in there and the way they bounce back and forth. They're doing some interesting things with the uh, uh, cinematography and the direction. So, you know, have fun with it. Yeah, yeah, honestly. Um, and I'm looking yeah. forward to season two. I'm yeah, also which starts in not too long. Yeah. And I was actually thinking when new seasons come out, I wonder if uh, another season of Lost in Space is going to come out. Uh, maybe soon, but we'll get to that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so honestly, oh, wow, sorry. I got to say, this last episode, um, for me, um, I really, I had to give the last one a flush. I, I really did. Yeah, yeah I, I had to give it a flush because um, all in all, it was a good accumulation of everything and it was winning, but it wasn't the best that it could be. You know, there were a few parts of it that I'm like, okay, I see that you're doing this just to wrap it up, but you should have wrapped it up a long time ago. And yeah. of course, the after credit scene. Oh, like yeah. Like one, a TV show shouldn't have an ap- after credit scene. This episode was very tropey. Yes. That's that's why I was feeling like it wasn't like the penultimate, oh my God, not like the first episode that blew my freaking mind. Right. This episode, it was like, okay, it was exciting, I was engaged, but there wasn't a lot of there that wasn't, okay, well, we're, we got this trope, we got this trope, we got this trope, we got this trope. And of course, the ending credits of, oh, look, there's the flower the environmentalist was talking about, and oh, look, there's a little bee in it. Oh, it's everything. And then, smash. Right. Zombie crawling out of it. Oh, is it Solomon Grundy? No, it's Latte Cup, and she does not look happy. Right. <laughs> Fortunately, really she's no longer she's no longer crazed with terror gas. <clears throat> but I don't know. Now, the series as a whole, um, you know, and everybody who's been talking to me knows, this show was hard. Yes. For me to watch, um, as I was saying with Daredevil. When Deborah Ann Wall is on screen being Karen Page, I feel things when I'm watching her. And when I'm watching this show, Mm -hmm. I'm feeling most of the things. I'm not feeling all the things, but I feel so bad. (laughs) I I know uh, it's a drama, and I I really do appreciate that. It's a drama. Um, But, yeah, I feel so, so bad while watching it because it's just so grim. You know what I mean? Yeah. And Uh, one of the things I was thinking about was uh, pacing on this mm -hmm. because um, it's I think it was really made to be binged. Yes. And I, I didn't binge it. I mean, I was doing one episode a week, so it felt. Certain aspects of it, I felt like, oh, God, just get over yourself. Start dragging this out. But then I realized, but it's only 10 episodes. Yeah. It's not like they pulled this over like a like a, like a a 48 two-season arc on, on uh, CW It's not or like Tandy has been on the other side of the ocean trying to run a city we don't care about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, this is something that you would have seen in one or two viewings. Right. So I actually think the pacing is a very appropriate when you look at how it was meant to be watched. And um, I'm, you know, like I said, I'm looking forward to more. I really hope they bring back some of the some of that just awesome love the first season that just gut punched you. See, I don't know. I I, I want to know where they're going with it now because we've got it as far as an origin story goes. Yeah, this was a good origin story and a good first adventure and a good introduction of an antagonist in the Roxxon Corporation. Um, with you know, so oh god, I as, as I was saying, the, Ro- the Roxxon Corporation is the frat boy cor- corporation. They're evil, but kind of in a incompetent way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, again, they're yeah, they're they're the opposite of Stark Tech in the way that um, what's it, Justin Hammer Industries is also the opposite. Um, but the episode, it yeah, it was very tropey. It was very this, but. It decided to wrap up a lot of things that needed to be wrapped up and leave open enough things for the next season. Specifically, Mom's place in Roxxon. Um, What's Tandy going to do now with environmental scientist? Is she done? Is is that coming off? Um, So with that, with the questions that it had to ask, I have to give it a four of a kind. Um, This this was a good one. Um, Really good one. but all in all, you know, 
But what I got to say, I really got to say on this, the season as a whole, okay, um, from beginning to end as far as storytelling, mm-hmm. pacing, um, lighting, all, all of the things that make up an entire season, um, there was a lot of stuff there. Now, personally, I didn't mind the pacing because... I binged it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, and, I mean, I, I, like I said, the, the pacing, it's meant to be binged, yeah. and the pacing's pretty good when you binge it. And the second part about it is um, the stuff that they showed, again, this hurt. This hurt me as an intelligent black dude. It hurt me as a black dude that lives in a white area. So everything involving what Ty was going through with the suppressed anger, the ghetto rage, the constant like the thousand whispers that tear down his self-esteem, his patience, and you know, and the unfair standard that he's held to, that he's trying to live up to because he's too young to know better. Um, all of that just tore me up. Mm-hmm. But I've also lived in a trailer park. So I've known Tandy. I've known many Tandys. And I'm like, oh, this show is doing exactly what Marvel sets out to do, which is make um, cathartic motivational heroes. Heroes Mm -hmm. that you know going through things that you have gone through. It's not a matter of identifying with. It's a matter of identifying. (laughs) Like, that is me. That doesn't remind me of me. That is who I am. That is one of my friends. And we all know I like aspirational heroes. <laughs> I like, this is what we should be type of thing, which is why Captain America is one of my favorite Marvel guys. Um, but the fact that it hurt that bad, and it was supposed to, yeah, was the thing that really put this over the top for me. This said, you know what? We are going to do a show about two heroes that nobody really remembers. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, the comic book was all about Dare and Say No to Drugs. Although Dare is now turning a really big hand to suicide prevention. So go check that out, guys, because teenagers mm-hmm. do need help and kids need even more. Um, but they kind of turned this from you know, Cloak and Dagger to try and keep kids off of drugs to Cloak and Dagger about two disenfranchised people and what that means. And they're being good or they're becoming heroes because the heroism needs to be done, but she's not a good person. Yeah. And he's a good person despite himself. Mm -hmm. So the question is, can she become good without him becoming bad? And I'm just going, dude, That is amazing. That is a great setup. So over the next few seasons, we know there's going to be a role reversal between, you know, and on the moral scale, we had um, Ty and Tandy. And now we're more like this, you know. And so in the next season, are we going to go here? Are we going to go here and then here? You know, are they going to go down together and then one of them pulls the other one back up? Who knows? Yeah. Um. So the fact that I can ask that question gives it a few more points. And the fact that I want an answer to that question is what really pushes it over the top for a full house for me. (laughs) These are characters I care about. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Now, I want to know what happens with these guys. So, And, you know, is Ty going to do the right thing and lock that down? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Yes, he is. Because I'm just waiting for, you know, episode episode two or three of the second season when, when uh, Ty and Tandy have a conversation with Auntie because, you know, so we survived the whole thing we were supposed to do. Now what? <laughs> She's now like, you got to lock that down. <laughs> <laughs> got to lock that down with my niece. That's what you got to do. <laughs> so, yeah. So, all in all, um, I got to say, I, I honestly yeah. think that was... That was a really enjoyable show. It was a good show. I, I recommend it. So, you know, well, um, we have gone over time, Is but it? you know what? I'm really starting to say, you know what? Let's just make the show two hours. I don't know. But uh, thank you for showing up. Mm-hmm. Thank you for showing up. Yep. You know, that, that has been a thing. And, um, you know, thank you guys for showing up. Thank you for whenever you're watching this. Um, hey, YouTube, what's up? So thank you guys for watching that. And, um, you know, and of course, all thanks all good thanks to the people over in NP City. What's going on, guys? Thank you for that. 
Yeah, um, yeah, really, Adventure Pub is holding it down. Um, <coughs> so um, that is it for this week. Next week, the henchman um, is going to do like a one-shot show, um, maybe a movie. Um, you'll have to tune in or um, – You'll have to correspond with us to find out on that. And, of course, I'm going to be going into the next episode of Daredevil. So thank you guys for showing up. You know, if you guys want to say something to us and all that stuff, well, sorry, because we're done. I'm tired. We got to go to bed. But <laughs> Well, okay, we're not going to bed because it's only, you know, 6.30, 7-ish or something over here. But... With all that, I gotta say, just uh, <clears throat> grab your keyboard and leave us, you know, drop us a line over at Back in the Deck at gmail.com. That's B A C K I N T H G D E C K at gmail.com. Um, follow us over on YouTube, and for you guys on YouTube, what's up? Come check out the Twitch stream, hit us up on all that stuff. Um, follow us up on the Twitter, and of course, join Deckers on the Book now. If, and that's part if you're on Facebook and all that stuff, um, if you want to listen to this while you drive or shower or do stuff that has no internet clearance, like my job, I don't have internet at my job, and I don't like using my phone's data plan because I have a cheap phone and we all know how that goes, head on over to SoundCloud and just download the MP3. Listen to all of them. Listen to our conversations and all that stuff in MP3 format. Add us to your playlist. Um, the more you do that, the easier it's going to be for me to put our stuff on iTunes to help keep the lights on. And of course, join us on Instagram. And speaking of keeping the lights on, um, sorry about the shine that um, we're kind of going through right now because, well, it's finally not colder than anything out there like it has been for the past couple of few. But um, if you guys want to help us out and help us keep the lights on and allow me to keep my air conditioning spell going, head over to the Patreon at patreon.com slash bid underscore p. Um, become a patron and for as little as one dollar a month. Um, for you guys over on YouTube, I'll leave a link in the description. Same for you guys on the SoundCloud. Um, but that's at patreon.com slash capital B little i capital B underscore p. Um, and that'll really, really help us out to try and keep the lights on. And once we hit our certain goals on a lot of our tiers, um, I'll be able to stop the day job that has me exhausted and catch up on all the editing and make sure that the shows have even higher production value because we're getting a little better every day. Thank you, Skillshare, who's not um, who's not sponsoring this episode. But with that, we're gonna say, anybody who tells you that you can't have the hobbies you like or the or like the things that you like because of your circumstances of birth, be it race, religion, creed, gender identity, sexual orientation, your disability, or your budget, you just tell them that we said to take those cards and put them back in the deck. This is Solar Gray, the cinematic sorcerer, along with License to and we will see you guys next time on Buster Recap. Good night, everybody.